Yesterday felt like the 4th of July, and today it feels like Oktoberfest should be after worship next Sunday. How's that for a plug for Oktoberfest, after worship next Sunday? But it's nice thinking about how the years advance and how time passes and how we share that together from season to season because we never know how this life we build with each other becomes the future that we share in service to the church. So before preaching today, I want to share with you news from our seminarian, the Reverend Seminarian Andy Tamminger who was texting me last night about bucket list seminary opportunities. How he got to lead the procession in worship for the inauguration of a new seminary president and take worship life he learned here into the worship life of a new chapter of training public leaders in ministry for generations to come. So consider the songs we sing today and think of where they may lead us in procession as we march to Zion in the future. Because the Church of Reformation is being built on things like this. In fact, I wonder, could we try an experiment on this day with Psalm 91? Just see if this lands with you. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand pretty close to perfect grace mercy and peace to you from god our father and the lord and savior jesus christ amen Pretty close to perfect is what the disciples were looking for in the gospel today. When James and John, the sons of Zebedee, other times called sons of thunder, when James and John ran up to Jesus saying, can we ask you something, teacher? Sure, what is it, friends? Can we be close to perfect? Can we be near you, at your right and at your left, in your glory? Jesus, can we be the next best thing? Can we be pretty close to perfect? How much of our life as disciples is still in our minds and in our hearts, this desire to perhaps, at the most, be pretty close to perfect, maybe the next best thing, not exactly where Jesus is, but somewhere nearby, just to his right, just to his left. And Jesus looks at them and says, do you know what you're asking? You're asking to be somewhere other than the place where I'm standing. I have told you to pick up the cross and follow me. I have told you to be with me where I am as I promise to be Emmanuel, God who is with you where you are. I have come to share your exact spot, your exact location, I've come to share your life and your humanity. And the most you're asking is to be somewhere nearby, somewhere close to perfect, somewhere to the right or the left of the center of where God is. 
What about the cup that I give you? Can you drink it? What about the baptism in which I am baptized? Can you not be baptized with that promise that God could look at a life like yours that feels so far from perfect, that may feel so broken, so muddy, so dirty, so dead in this world? Can't you be baptized with those words? Where God, who calls us children, sees Jesus Christ so centrally in you that the promise is to your name that you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. John and James and Joel and, and you. We know how to answer. We know because Jesus puts his cup in our hands. We know because Jesus pours his baptism on our lives. We know that we are not capable of a whole lot in this world, but we are capable of having what God gives us. We are capable of holding heaven in our hands. We are capable of rising from those waters. Yes, Jesus. You have promised to be where we are, and we are able to receive what you promise. So then Jesus says, this will be true. The cup that I drink, the cup that I will show you is poured out in my blood, not only for you, but for the many, for the forgiveness of sin. You will take this cup, and the life of God will fill you internally, from your skin down to your soul, every cell of your being filled, not with something close to perfect, but with the crucified one who says from the cross, in this hurting world, the kind of love that lays itself down for friends, that love is by the cross finished, completed, perfected. And you will have God running through your veins. These waters of baptism, this promise of the Jordan River, not just washing you up so you smell good until you're sweaty again, but this water of new life that lifts you up out from the drowning to take in a new breath, like death out of the grave, drawing in the Holy Spirit for life. This wholeness in your breast where before you felt nothing but death and disease. This new life is for you. This is what you receive in the baptism that I give you. Not just the old waters of John. Not just the muddy creek that Israel passed through to reach the promised land. I give you every piece of eternity to wash over you with the word made flesh from your skin all the way to heaven. You are able you are capable, you are made whole by grace to stand in communion with God Almighty, with the Ancient of Days, with the one who is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. So do you get why it's such a silly thing? Do you know how it's too little to ask to simply be at my right or my left.
because glory happens where we live in, with, and under God. Not just somewhere in the orbit. We are called to be the body of Christ for the sake of good news. We have been told by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we have the power to look at people who have been condemned by the old law and told that they will rot and perish for their sins. We have been told by Christ that we can smile in their face and say, by the grace of God, you are free. You are free to be loved. You are already cherished and you will be held close. So don't let anyone's condemnation tell you that just close to perfect is still too far for the high bar of heaven. We are sent into the world as the body of Christ to be the body of Christ. And there are plenty of Christians who like to take plenty of things literally from Scripture. Let that be what we take literally. We are given his cup and washed in his baptism to set this world free. Because the glory of Christ is shown to us not on a golden throne, but on a wooden cross where he is faithful when the world shows up and steals his life. And who's on the right and who's on the left is not chosen by God because God does not choose for criminals to die on a hill outside Jerusalem. That condemnation comes from people like me. People like we are when we forget what it means to stand in the sandals of the Almighty. The world will be killed next to Christ as if it's nothing. The world will be raised by Christ because through God's eyes, which we are asked to make our own, you are everything. Your children, your grandchildren, your parents and grandparents, your teachers and classmates and co-workers, your neighbors and the troublemakers around you, you are everything called into the center of God. Not for the anger of the right or the left, but for that position to realize that children of humanity are given hope to serve one another, to belong to one another, to come so that we might make each other whole and free. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. So body of Christ, reach out your hand from Christ himself and hold this world in God's perfect, merciful, gracious love. Amen.